Okay, so the proof uh, that we, we still have to complete is this, uh, is the fact that L, L2, small L2 is uh, complete. So we re yesterday we remained uh, here. Uh, we have a, a Cauchy sequence uh, Xn, hence this is the definition of being a Cauchy sequence, and we proved that uh, there is convergence of all components. Hmm? So for any k, we proved that uh, there is convergence of the components, okay? So what remains, so we have something in the limit, xk. For any k, we have a number. Then we define x equal the sequence xk. This is a definition. So what remains to show is that x is in L2 and that uh, the convergence actually is not of all components, but is the com convergence in L2. So this was what remains. So uh, now for any L in N, uh, I have that uh, this, uh, for any L, for any epsilon positive there exists such that xkn minus xk square m less than epsilon square for any n and then m and n and then we get that. So in particular, since this infinite sum is less than epsilon squared, a fortiori, this is less than epsilon squared for any fixed L, okay? So letting M going to plus infinity here, huh? and, and using, and using um, star, It follows that for any uh, for any n bigger than n bar. Okay. Do you agree? Okay. Now. Um, this is true for any L, right? And epsilon is independent of L. Therefore, for any N bigger than L. So we, we have at least uh, something similar to the convergence. Uh, you see, we, we are very close to say that uh, xk conver uh, xn converges to x, actually. We are almost there. Uh, and the only thing is to observe that, so we have this, but then uh, let me write this. So I want to show that x is in L2, so I have to control the sum of square, I have to, to control this, right? Once I control this, then this is the definition of convergence in L2. Hmm? So let me write it x, xk squared. So I, I add then and subtract x, OK, OK. I, I add and subtract this. And so this is less than or equal than xk by the triangular property of the absolute value uh, xkn square. OK. And this is less than or equal than 
So there is also another inequality, which is, uh, say, a plus b, a plus b square, less than or equal than 2 a square plus b square. OK? This is clear. Hmm? So I apply this inequality with this choice of a and this choice of b. OK? So this is less than or equal than 2 times uh, xk minus xkn square plus 2 xkn square. And so we see that when I sum this over, over k, huh? when I sum this over k, the sum over k of xk squared is less than or equal than a number, even a small number, a 2 epsilon squared. Huh? plus the 2 times the, the infinite sum of x, k, n squared, which is finite, because each x, uh, each x, n, for any fixed n, each x, n is in L2. Huh? Because... Hmm? This shows that uh, x is in L2. Huh? So we have proven uh, point one. Huh? Hence, uh, this finite, which is like to say x in L2 which implies point one. So to conclude the proof, we have to show that this convergence takes place actually in L2. But this is exactly what is written here. For any, now let me, for any epsilon positive, there exists n bar such that this is less than this. So this sentence here in uh, the box is exactly as to say that this converges to x in L2. OK? Okay, so this shows uh, the theorem. So our uh, small L2 is a, an interesting, reasonable, infinite, dimen infinite dimensional Hilbert space. Uh, we, I left also another exercise yesterday on the seminorm P. Uh, did you try to do the, is it OK? Everybody solved the problem on the seminorm? Yes? So um, P of x1 minus x2 is larger than or equal than p of x1 minus p of x2. This is because p is subadditive. So remember, uh, p of x plus y is less than or equal 
then p of x plus p of y. And therefore, this is simply obtained by writing this like this. Okay? So from this, we have this. But then we can exchange the role of x1 and x2. So uh, p of x1 minus 2, x2 is, uh, remember also that p of lambda x is equal to the p of x. And so p of x1 of x2 is also equal to p of x2 minus x1. Okay, so and therefore this is larger or equal than p of x2 minus p of x1. Hmm? Uh, we obtain that this, say p of x2, p of x1 minus p of x2 is less than or equal than p of x1 minus x2 but also larger than or equal than minus p of x1 minus p x2. Huh? This means huh? so this means that p of x1 minus x2 is larger than or equal than the absolute value So this, this gives us the, a little bit uh, a little bit more surprising that this, this happens. Okay. Now, finally, the last exercise that I left was to see whether inside the Hilbert cube product minus 1 over k, 1 over k, we can insert a ball centered at the origin. And the answer was yesterday was no, we cannot. So this cannot contain a ball centered at the origin. Do you have the proof of this? Which is the proof? Because this goal, uh, the dimension of Q is tending to zero. Yes. But if you take some epsilon ball, so let's assume, assume that we ha I have a ball contained here. Yes, it means that uh, there exists such number, 1 over k less than epsilon. Because yeah. 1 over k tending to 0. But then we will take element uh, 0, 0, 0, epsilon, uh, and 0, 0, 0. Hmm? I mean, 1 over k, uh, k is position, we will insert epsilon, and this doesn't concern. Uh, Okay, so now we will obtain, yes, it's true, if, if, if there is a point here, say, a point, actually, 0, 0, 0, a point uh, epsilon over 2, say, because this is open, actually, so if there is a point uh, uh, with one component, like one component equal to epsilon over 2, say, then I take k so that 1 over k is less than epsilon over 2. Uh, and then I take the point 0, 0, 0, 0, and at the take k component, I put epsilon over 2. This is a point here, but it's not a point here. <laughs> so there is a sort, I mean, this is a sort of more isot isotrop isotropic object. And this isotropic object cannot be contained in this, in this object here. However, if you have not followed this proof, we will obtain once more this 
this, this, in, this, uh, this fact as a consequence of, of the next theorem that I will say. Okay? However, the, the proof is direct, as, as, he, as he said. Okay, let me show you this theorem. So let x a point be a point in L2 and let r be a positive number. Okay, and then so br, br of x as usual is the set of all point uh, y in L2 such that the distance from x to y is less than r. This is usual notation, open bold. Uh, and this is the distance in L2. Okay, So when I write d, d means distance in L2. Hmm. OK, so this, this object here is not uh, sequentially relatively compact. <coughs> relatively is not relatively compact. It's not relatively compact. OK. OK, this, uh, this is maybe, so you see, what it is saying is that neighborhoods in the topology of the distance are not local. Um, this essentially says that if you have a neighborhood in the, in the if you take, say, the closure of this neighborhood in the, in the topology of the distance, then this cannot be compact. Or if you want, if you have a compact set, then it has empty interior. Mm -hmm. And so this, this says that uh, this topology has the, the number of compact sets for this topology is, is not enough in some sense. There are many open sets, but not so many compact sets. And this is maybe not good. So one would like to have something, some new topology that has more compact sets. Hmm? Uh, and, and this is the origin for, uh, of, of the so-called weak topology. So at the end, uh, one needs to put on this space another notion of topology weaker than the topology of the norm, uh, but with more compactness properties. So behind, uh, after this result, uh, there, is, uh, there, is, there is the problem of choosing another topology in L2. Uh, you don't see this distinction in finite dimension. In finite dimension, weak topology and strong topology are the same. You don't see anything. But in infinite dimensions, of course, in finite dimension, this is relatively compact. If you close it, then take a sequence here, then there is a limit, some sequence converging to. Uh, so I mean, this is, uh, I put in parentheses sequentially because for metric spaces, we can always uh, use se se sequences. Okay, 
So if you want, you can put sequential. You, you don't put sequential is the same because we are in metric space. Okay. Um, okay. So proof. So uh, maybe so you have to keep in mind this result because this is maybe one of the starting points of ca of functional analysis, meaning that uh, compact sets have empty integers. Compact sets have an empty interior. Uh, and this is uh, sort of origin, one of the starting points. So proof, idea, find a sequence. So let me call it sequence uh, uh, y, uh, uh, yn. <coughs> Find the sequence of yn in br of x having no converging subsequences. Subsequences. Try to find the sequence. So if you want to make the proof more trans, so x is x is a point in L2. Hmm? So x is a sequence, is a point in L2. Okay. Now, if you want to prove to make the proof more transparent, maybe you you can take x equal to zero. For uh, if you take x equal to zero, then you show that uh, this this uh, uh, this is um, this holds. Uh, at the origin, but then essentially you have, you have the result. So if you don't like now the proof that I will do, take x equal to 0, which it makes it more transparent. Okay. So I have x, the center of the ball, and I want to find y and sequence, sequence of, uh, of sequences. So for any n, We define yn as follows. When yn as follows. Okay. So the component k of yn is equal to the component. So if k is equal to n, or if k is different from n, I split this. And then this is equal to the n component plus, say, r over 2 here, and then xk. Hmm? So if x is equal to 0, just to understand a little bit, if x is equal to 0, then yn k is equal to 0 if k is different from n, and r over 2 if k <coughs> is equal to n. Okay. This is just to understand a little bit better. Hmm? OK. OK. Now, notice that uh, um, then any element, then yn, is in L2, clearly. Hmm? And also, the distance of yn from x is less than r, as you can see. Huh? It is immediate, because it is actually r over 2. Mm -hmm. Therefore, yn belongs to B for any n, for any n.
OK. Now, we can uh, consider the distance between two points of the sequence. So take now n different from m. Huh? And consider the distance between yn and yn. It is clear what, what, what is the distance between these two points. I mean, huh? because the distance, so the distance between yn and ym squared, if you want, it is by definition this infinite sum of ynk minus ymk squared by definition. Now, I remember now the, the definition of one. And so this is equal. So this reduces just to contributions only when k is equal to m or n. Otherwise, this is 0. So this is equal to y n n minus y m n square plus y n m minus y m m square. I mean, the infinite sum reduces only for the, those index k equal to either n or m. And this is r over 2 square. This is r over 2 square, right? So this is 2 r over 4. Uh, r squared over 4. Okay? And so this is equal to r squared over 2. Hmm? Therefore, the distance is always equal to r over square root of 2. And therefore, Yn cannot ha have any converging subsequence. If you prefer, you, you can just think about this case. x equal to 0, it is more transparent. Okay. So uh, Yn cannot have any converging subsequence. So the fact that you have at your disposal an infinite number of dimensions allow, allow, allows you to, to make some kind, some kind of tricks. You take in any direction a constant uh, distance from the origin in any direction. Uh, and then uh, this, this sequence cannot have converging subsequences. Okay. Exercise. Uh, um, let C be a subset over two. If the interior of C is non empty then C is not compact. OK. 
Okay. Or in other words, K, K compact implies sequentially compact I mean okay so let us try to do the exercise Assume by contradiction C is compact. Hmm? And assume that uh, its interior is non empty. Hmm? And assume it is non empty. So take a point x, take so if the interior is non empty, there is an interior point. So uh, there is a point in the set and there is a radius. The topology is the one induced by the norm, and so uh, the ball is contained in C. Okay. Now, a compact set in a Hausdorff topological space is closed. Hmm? And this is a metric space, therefore it is a Hausdorff space, right? So we also have this inclusion. Hmm? But C is closed. Hmm? So this shows that uh, uh, the, uh, this contradicts exactly the previous uh, because this shows that then this is compact. Uh, this is the closure. This is contained in a compact set, so this is compact. Uh, yeah. This is a closed subset of a compact set. Therefore, this is compact itself. Huh? So, the, 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 no, I mean, so I am using just this. Eh? Okay. So then we X is compact. Which is in contradiction what we have just proven before. Okay. So this is something that should 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 create some I mean some some difficulties to our intuition on what is small L two. 
Huh? Because now small L2 is complete, is separable, but compact subset have empty interior. So this is, I mean, something that is not so easy to imagine, I, I believe, when one studied topology. Right? So this is a very good, interesting example of topological space with this strange uh, property. And this is also the starting form, as I said, of introducing a new topology having more compact sets. However, as I said, from this you can start to understand how difficult functional analysis is because infinite dimensions probably something outside, outside our intuition in some sense. For instance, let us do this exercise. Let f be a function continuous with compact support. Then f is identically 0. So there are no continuous functions on L2, no non-trivial continuous functions on L2 with compact support. And so when, when, I mean, when you have, when you do, when you see, I mean, measure theory, for instance, or uh, when, when you, the, 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 there is a lot of, uh, the space of continuous functions with, with compact support has in general a lot of, of importance. Well, in this case, you have to replace continuous functions with compact support with something else because there are no non-trivial continuous functions on L2 with compact support. Huh? So let us try to see why. Do you help me? Can you help me? Do you have some? You don't have some open set in the continuous free image. If it is continuous free image, it should be open. Uh, yes. Image. And when you, where do you use uh, compactness of support in this argument? I was thinking about that. It's the first idea. Yeah, but then you have to use compactness of support. Yes, take a point exactly, take x in L2, such that, say, f of, so assume by contradiction that f is not identically 0. OK? So assume by contradiction not identically 0. Hence, there is at least one point in L2 where f is not 0. OK? OK. Assume without loss of generality, huh? we can assume that f of x, say, is positive. Huh? Hmm? By continuity, since f is continuous, there exists a neighborhood, call it y, neighborhood of, um, of x, such that f of y is positive for any y in u. Now consider, so, the closure of u bar. Huh? Now, the closure of u bar is necessarily compact because it's contained in the support of f. 
contained contained in support of f because u is contained in support of f okay So that, as before, I mean, U bar is contained in the closure of the support of F, which is compact, which is equal to the support of F. And therefore, this shows that there is a compact set with non empty interior. The support of F has non empty interior. Contradiction. So all, all of this is, is in order to say, pay attention to, to infinite dimensional spaces. Hmm? Something that you, you, you think to be extremely natural, like this, does not exist. <laughs> OK? And so if you want to take some test function over L2, you have to change the class. Theorem L2 is not sigma sequentially compact, is not sigma compact. Okay. This means that is not the union of a countable number uh, of compact sets. Proof. Assume by contradiction that you can write L2 as the union over n of Kn with Kn compact. Hmm? Then we know. So I assume that you can cover L2 with a countable union of compact set. Hmm? So not only L2 is not locally compact. Not only L2 is not locally compact, meaning, uh, but, but it, is, it cannot be covered by the union of a countable num number of uh, compact sets. Because this, we know, then for any n, since it is compact, it has empty interior. Do you see the contradiction? Uh, 
Now the contradiction is the contradiction with Baer theorem. You know Baer theorem. That says that under this condition, at least one of the compact set has non empty interior. If, because this is complete. Eh? The completeness over 2, if you have a complete metric space, complete metric space, which can be covered as an union of compact sets, at least one has non empty interior. At least one. Now, so uh, we know that th there are so so there are not so many compact sets in L two. So uh, after this discussion, this discussion, we deduce that there are not too many, there are not too many compact subset sets in L2. And this, is, this will be a problem for us. But we also know, because we know that they have empty interior. However, we started the lecture by observing that uh, there is a set, a strange set here. contained in L2, so let me call it uh, C, contained in L2, that could be compact. This could, could be. Why could be? Could be compact. Well, we don't know exactly. If it is um, the, the previous was minus one over k, one over k because it was symmetric. Now this is exactly the same. Okay. Mm, the, it's okay. So the fact that here there is zero, it is because it, this is more standard. Maybe this is really called the Hilbert cube. Okay. So we have already observed that it is an, it is in L two because the extremum is made by a. a sequence convergence in L2, the right extremum, the right extrema. Hmm? We know this. Uh, we know that this is closed. This is closed, convex. Closed. We don't know it is compact, actually. But we know that it has empty interior, at least. <laughs> because this was observed at the beginning. So that is why, I mean, we know that interior of C is empty. And this is why we hope to have at least one example of non-trivial compact set. Huh? So, so maybe this is a candidate. This is a candidate. of non-trivial compact subset. So now, this is called the Hilbert cube. And let us try to prove that it is compact. So we have a theorem here. Other questions, problems? 
the moment is okay. Do you see some proof of this? It's 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 not easy. Yeah? Yes, sometimes it's proved by SM net. Ah, you already know. <laughs> so as, uh, so so is there somebody else that uh, uh, see the proof? What, what, what about the following proof? This is a product of compact sets. Yes, what about, the, what about using the Tikhonov theorem? Tikhonov theorem. Tikhonov theorem says that the, the, the product of compact sets is compact. This is general, big, extremely strong. Uh, <laughs> That is the point. So I assume that I want to prove this using Tikhoron theorem. But this is the product, countable, even countable, not, not, not in more than countable, actually just only countable, product of compact sets. Tikhonov says it is compact. Yeah, it is compact, but in the product topology. Hmm? And we know that the, the product topology has more or less compact set than the topology of L2. More. Because it has less open sets. <laughs> is, it, is it clear? No? I mean, there is a theorem in topology, very big, which says, in general, the product of compact set is compact for the product topology, however. Hmm? So one could invoke this theorem and, and say, well, this is compact. The problem is that you have proven it is compact in the product topology, not in topology over two. Huh? And the topologies are different. And in particular, it is more easy to prove compactness in product topology than compactness in L2. Okay, so, so we have to change. By the way, in this, in this uh, countable, I mean, there is also, there is also no need of uh, so big theorem like Tikhonov for proving compactness in the product topology of this, because this is a countable product. And therefore, one can do this by hands, taking a sequence huh? and the diagonal argument. So actually, maybe Tikhonov is not, not, not necessary, because you take a sequence of points here, countable sequence. Then you take the first component. The first component lies in 0, 1. So x, 1, n. This is a sequence, eh? first component. Then you can extract a subsequence such that you can extract, say, a subsequence indecised by n1, such that the first component is converging. No? So that, say, x1 n1 converges as n1 goes to infinity to a point. Uh, and uh, yes, and uh, so n one is a sequence. N one is a sequence of numbers. So n one is is a sequence of indices. Sequence of natural numbers. Okay, maybe the notation is, is not perfect. Just, just to say that this is converging to a point at x1, and since 0, 1 is compact, actually, this belongs to 0, 1. Then I consider x2 and 1. This is a sequence. It belongs to 0, 1 half because I'm taking the second component. Therefore, it, is a, it, it has a subsequence converges to a point in 0, 1 half. So let me call n2 <laughs> the, 
this subsequence extracted from the sequence N1. So N2 is a sequence extracted from N1. Hmm? Therefore, um, X2, N2 converges to X2 in 0, 1 half, etc., etc. I mean, this procedure can be uh, repeated a countable number of times to extract just one sequence such that, uh, so one sequence uh, N prime, I don't know, N prime sequence extracted using a diagonal, diagonal that a sequence of indices such that xkn converges to xk as n goes to infinity for any k. Uh, and this belongs to 0, 1 over k. Hmm? So this shows by hands, using, however, a diagonal argument, which is not so trivial, show by hands compactness in that in the previous in the topology of the product in the product topology. Okay? So you don't need actually for this uh, countable product, you don't need invoking maybe Tikhonov theorem. Okay? So now well, let us prove that that uh, this uh, this Hilbert cube is actually compact in the topology of L2. So there is a theorem of topology which says the following, which actually is the, is, is an interesting characterization of compactness. Uh, theorem of topology is that compact if and only if it relates compactness with completeness. Hmm? If it only if complete and no, no, no. Totally bounded. This is uh, an interesting result of topology. Now I'll tell you what does it mean, maybe I recall you what does it mean totally bounded. Huh? For any epsilon positive, there exists, say, an epsilon, oh, say, okay, um, C contained in a topological space X is so definition. Let X be a topological space, capital X, a subset of a topological space X, C is called totally bounded. If for any positive epsilon there exists an index and epsilon and there exists points x1, x and epsilon points of x such that C is covered the union of P. I xi contains C. Hmm? Ah, see, sorry, sorry. This is uh, is uh, the ball of radius of psi. totally bounded.
is called totally bounded. Hmm? A remark, maybe home. Uh, so, uh, metric space. Eh? So X metric space because we are using the bolts. Eh? So since we are using the bolts, we have a metric space. Okay. Home totally bounded implies bounded. But bounded does not, in general, implies totally bounded. But the converse is not always true. Well, this, this implication is very easy. Because say, take epsilon equal 1. Hmm? Then you can cover your set with a finite number of balls of radius 1. Therefore, there is a big pole, ball of radius. I don't know. You can, you can cover your set with um, one and, and with a number capital N of balls of radius one. Hmm? So you, you can cover your set with a number of balls of fixed radius, and your set is here. Now, by the triangular property, there will be a big pole containing all this finite number of balls. Hmm? So you, you cover your ball with finite number of balls of radius 1, say 100 of balls. And then there will be a big ball of radius 100 plus 1, I don't know, whatever, co covering all the balls, containing all the balls. And therefore, this means that it is bounded. Bounded mean, means exactly that it is contained in a big ball. Huh? So the proof of this implication is easy. And indeed, indeed the words totally, word totally says totally is stronger than without totally. <laughs> <No>? <laughs> but the converse is not always true. It's not always true. And therefore, you cannot, I mean, just prove completeness and boundedness in order to have compactness. You have to prove completeness and total boundedness in order to prove equivalence to compactness. Now, uh, do you see why? Uh, Converse is not always true. Because we take an L2 space, you need both and epsilon. In both, you can take orthogonal basis. Well, but Nell, <laughs> you, don't, you, you are using a lot of things, the existence for an orthonormal basis, for instance. OK, not orthonormal. For example, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, and this sequence. I mean, only one point is one, the rest is uh, zero. It is uh, countably many. They are countably many. Yes. And we take each of them some small epsilon neighborhood which disjoin each other. So let us try to see if I have understood. So you take L2. And then you take balls centered, say, at the point 0, uh, I, 0. You take the ball B i. No, you so take zero centered at zero radius equal to one. The ball B i centered at the origin yes. with radius one. Yes. Yes. And then and I will take sequences one zero zero zero. Ah, you take one so points in this ball. Yes. 
take the clo blo closure. Yes. One zero zero. Yes, closed. Okay. This one zero zero one zero zero zero. Okay. These are elements of, of this ball. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I will take, uh, for example, one of the three neighborhoods of each point. So let me call EI. EI this point. Where where? So EI is this. Point. And then I take uh, uh, the neighborhood uh, one third centered at EI. Yes. So yeah, this joint. These are this joint. But they cannot cover. Uh, they cannot cover all B zero. Yes, they cannot cover all B zero. And B zero is bounded. Yes. Well, there is another maybe example that we can do. Uh, let me see whether it works. Take on R the distance between two points, two real numbers, is equal to 1 if x is different uh, from y, and 0 if x is equal to y. Um, No. Take the following distance. So all points of R have distance 1 if x is different from 0, and 0 if x is equal to 0. So all points that are distance one from the origin, if the, eh? so you are using discrete space. Discrete space. So this is bounded space, but if I take a ball with radius less than one, I cannot cover it with a finite number of balls. It's more or less the same. Okay. Well, he claims that uh, this is a bounded set. Okay. But here, if you choose the particular point, in, from particular point in this. But the theorem says that x, this x is x1, x2, plus x. Right? Mm. OK, if such kind of points do exist, uh, Maybe it is better to take the discrete case. Huh? Well, I think you can choose uh, the, the set is not the, the, the ball, but use the set as is the sequence. So the ball cover the, the sequences so that the sequences is bounded. And uh, when we choose any number less than one, then we only cover that. Uh, if we need to choose the ball that cover Finite ball cover the other sequences, it cannot be because the sequences is finite. Hmm. So, uh, and not definitely constant also. Well, I think that this kind of examples can be constructed simply taking this uh, degenerate distance in which all points have distance one, at, unless they are equal essentially from the origin. Huh? Uh, so you don't really don't need uh, you don't need an infinite dimensional space. You, you just can work this in the real, but just take a distance very 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 singular. Okay. Um, now, of course, uh, uh, if we prove that C is compact, then this will imply that its interior is empty. And so we will have another proof of what we have said at the beginning of the lecture. Okay, the beginning of the lecture was: uh, Have you proved that this uh, is as empty interior? Yes. So and so and so. Okay. So this will give another proof of the fact that the interior of C is empty. Now, uh, when you say when you said epsilon net. Maybe you were referring to total boundedness, I think. Uh, something like that. 
So let us try to do the proof with, uh, because if you, if you want to work, I mean, we have something. I can take a sequence here, and I, I know there is a subsequence such that all components converge. This is the, the Tikhon of type argument that I made before. So what would remain is that to prove actually that subsequence not only converges in the sense of product topology, but it converges also in the sense of L2. I, what I'm saying is that we have already half of the proof without epsilon nets. So maybe you can try by yourself. Take a sequence here. We know there is a subsequence such that all components converge to a point of a two, diagonal argument. This is not enough. That subsequence must converge also in L2. Try to prove this by yourself. Now we do another proof. Hmm? OK. So well, we have to show essentially that C is totally bounded. Because we already know C is closed. L2 is complete. Therefore, C is also complete. OK? So huh? C, uh, L2 is complete. C is closed. C is contained in L2. This we know. And therefore, C is complete. So what remains to prove to show C uh, is totally bounded. Bound. OK, so fix epsilon positive. Take and take n bar, a number n bar in n, such that the, the tail uh, k from n bar plus 1 and infinity 1 over k squared, say less epsilon or epsilon over 2, I don't know, epsilon over 2. Epsilon over 2. Okay. Now I fix an n bar. I don't claim that this n bar is then an epsilon I'm looking for, for the total boundedness. I, I fix just an n bar. <coughs> I can always do this, OK? Now let me define a sort of projection of C on a finite dimensional space. So I take the following projection of C. All point of C having components after L bar which are 0. So xk equal to 0 for any k larger than L bar. Mm -hmm. So I am projecting the Hilbert cube on a finite dimensional space. This is um, contained in a, uh, this, this is contained, I mean, is a subset. So A is a subset, can be considered as a subset of R and bar. Hmm? And A is also, therefore A, just the product from 1 to n bar or 1 of 0, 1 over k, k is totally bounded. Huh? Because uh, it is uh, compact in this, in this finite dimensional space. Huh? OK, so A is totally bounded.
So I can apply now the definition of total boundedness. So any point Z in A belongs to uh, to one, at least one of the balls uh, of radius Uh, so let, let me let me just take so there exists points a one a now an epsilon huh? in a so there exists an epsilon comma there exists point in a such that any z, z in A belongs to one of the balls of radius, say, epsilon over 2, centered at AJ. Hmm? One of the ball. Cent so uh, maybe when I wrote total boundedness, I don't remember if I took the point uh, uh, x1, x, and epsilon in C or in x. Maybe in C. Yeah. C. Okay, uh, so any point Z belongs to one of the balls of radius, which is equivalent to say that the minimum of the distance minus the minimum J1 and epsilon, uh, the distance in L2, uh, norm of L2. Z minus AJ is less than epsilon over 2 for any Z in A. Hmm? So there is a, this is, is equivalent to say that uh, there is at, at least one index J such that Z is in the ball centered at AJ of radius epsilon over 2, this, this minimum way of writing. Okay, this is true for any z. So actually now I have uh, a candidate an epsilon corresponding to the previous choice of epsilon. Okay, so now the idea is to show that uh, this an epsilon is okay. So, and uh, Okay, now take any x in the cube and, and write x bar as the projection of, of x, x1, x n uh, bar, 0, 0, 0. Okay? So this x bar is an element of A. Now I consider the distance from one of the adjacent hmm? and the distance now is just this huh? plus plus the sum. Now, uh, any a j is in this finite dimensional space. Therefore, uh, the components of a j after n bar are all 0. Therefore, here, there is no a j. So there, here, uh, there is just the sum from, uh, let me use the index k from n bar plus 1 to infinity of xk square. Hmm? OK. Now, uh, now this is square root 
square. Now, any xk is an element of 0, 1 over k. So this is less than 1 over k square. Hmm? And so this is less than n bar plus 1 infinity, 1 over k square. Okay, so by, by our choice of n bar, this is less than or equal than epsilon over 2. So, ah, sorry, there is a mistake. Uh, so let me take the square here. So let, let me take this. It's, it's of course the same. Eh? Maybe I should take epsilon f to the square. It doesn't matter. OK. So now, for, for any j, for any j uh, from 1 to an epsilon, this is true for any j 1 and epsilon. So I now take the minimum over j. From this inequality, I find that the minimum, this is a minimum because it is a finite number of, of, of indices. So the minimum for any epsilon, the, the minimum over j x minus aj square is less than or equal than the minimum from 1 over an epsilon x bar mi minus aj square plus the, um, the tail plus epsilon over 2. But I know from the finite dimensional argument that my projection, the finite dimensional space, is less than epsilon over 2. So this is actually less than or equal than epsilon. So that should be an epsilon square. I'm sorry, because then I want bolts of radius epsilon. So if you adjust everything by putting here epsilon square, epsilon square, epsilon square, epsilon square and epsilon square. OK? Sorry for uh, So what I have shown is the following. So conclusion is the conclusion is min j from 1 to an epsilon x minus aj square less than or equal than epsilon square for any uh, x in the cube, which is exactly like to say that I am covering with a fin given epsilon, I am covering with a finite number of ball of radius epsilon uh, c. Centered at, uh, centered at uh, these uh, projections, A1, An, Epsilon. So this shows, hence, uh, given Epsilon, I, I found an Epsilon and points in, in, uh, in C, actually in A, but A is contained in C, obviously. Uh, such that this was, which is equivalent to say that it is totally bounded. And uh, you see, the proof is not easy. There is always the idea, so the, the difficult part of function in this kind of argument is that you always have the idea that uh, uh, infinite dimensions count less and less and less. As, n, as the dimension increases, they are not so important. So what we are doing here is that we are covering a big part of C, finite dimensional, using totally bounded. And then we have something which remains, 
uh, something which remains that, however, is not so important, is the tail. So the point is to make this argument uh, concrete. Uh, uh, it is never e so um, easy to do this. In this case, it works. And so there is at least one proof that C is, is compact. Maybe you could try by yourself another proof using sequences. We already know that the sequence converges uh, in the product topology. Then it remains to prove that that converging subsequence actually converges also in, uh, in the stronger topology of L2. Okay. 